Welcome to Understand. This is Jordan with SciTools. Have you ever wanted to not only be shown where the bugs in your code are, but to be given real feedback in order to understand and fix them, all without having to bother the senior engineer down the hall? You're not alone. In this video, we're going to go over the new Bug Hunter feature in Understand and see how it can save you from costly code breaking errors. Bug Hunter looks for bugs that are not easy to see with the naked eye. Things like dangling pointers, division by zero instances, memory leaks, and more. Our code parsing technology searches every function and dependency for potential issues, saving your engineers valuable time. So to start, we'll need to add our source code to understand and select which checks we would like to run in the background. We can do this when prompted during the project wizard setup or manually at any time through the code check interface. So if I go to checks, select checks, we can select which bug hunter checks we want, which in my case, I'm gonna select all of them. And we need to make sure that this option to run in the background after analysis is checked. Um, background checks will run automatically anytime your project is analyzed and they also update the violation browser. So that's why we need to make sure this option is enabled. Um, so we can save that and close it. Uh, also note that the strict parser must be used in order for this to work accurately. So if we go to project configure project, and we go to C++, we need to make sure that strict is enabled because it's much more accurate than fuzzy. It's imperative that your project is on strict and analyzes without errors because if not, it's likely that Bug Hunter won't show any results, will show very few, or will simply show bad results altogether. So now that we know strict is enabled, say okay. Okay, so we've selected our bug checks. Now we need to reanalyze re our project. So we'll go to project, analyze all. Issues detected by Bug Hunter will appear in the violation browser and in the sidebar when we browse our code. So the violation browser can be opened under the view top level menu. So we'll go to view, violation browser. And here we see we have two Bug Hunter violations. Issues are saved until the bug is fixed or the ignore option is selected even between sessions. So here in the violation browser, issues can be searched and filtered. So if we want to search Pat, it'll show us only that one, or we can clear the filter here. And let's say we only want issues of severity urgent. We'll see that none of, none of them are urgent, but if we go and search by severity high, both of these have a high severity. I think by default, the all bug hunter checks have a high severity, but this can be configured in the code check selection screen as well. So once we select a bug hunter violation in the violation browser, we'll be instantly taken to that location in our source code. So let's double click Pat and we're taken directly to the violation line 317 in our source code. Here you'll see on the right hand side, we have a sidebar with more options. So to ignore a bug hunter violation, simply click the eye icon in the sidebar and you'll be given the option to annotate this action with explanatory comments. So we'll say, um, and we can choose to save it as a comment in the code or save it in the understand project. Um, but for now, we'll just preview the changes. So you can see understand places your comment on the relevant line along with a keyword that tells bug hunter to ignore this violation for now. That's the uncc underscore line. So we're not going to apply these changes for now. We're going to cancel because we want to explore this violation. So after we've chosen a violation, we can just press explore and we'll see a list on the right hand side that details the exact steps required to replicate the bug. So it starts on line 149 of egrep, and we can see that within the code editor, we'll see an explanation underneath each line of code that explains how the bug progresses. So we see that it starts here with assuming the condition is false, uh, takes the false branch, then we go down to line 153, assumes the condition is false, takes the false branch, etc., all the way down to where the violation occurs, where an array access results in this null pointer dereference. 
So at this point, we can either click ignore down here to dismiss the bug or modify our code and rerun Bug Hunter to ensure we've squashed it for good. Hopefully this short introduction to Bug Hunter demonstrated just how powerful the feature is. With Bug Hunter, you can harness the power of Understand's parsing technology to not only identify, but walk you through how to fix some of the most nasty bugs you can encounter. For more information on Bug Hunter or any other tool within Understand, you can visit support.scitools.com.